Hi gang, Scott here. We are continuing our march through the different tools in On One Effects. This video is about the textures filter. We're getting close to the end. We're up to the T's now, <laughs> textures filter. And uh, textures is about adding a texture overlay to your photo, blending it in, giving your photo a just different kind of feel. You can make it feel like you know a postcard or an oil painting or get uh, more creative, just kind of doing compositing. Uh, it's useful for all sorts of photos. I like to use it on travel photos. I'm a travel landscape guy, but I've seen other that use some of the light leaks and things on portraits. But I'll show you all the controls that the textures filter has in On One Effects, and we'll walk through an example uh, photo while we're going through all the controls. And really quick, if you like videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. And if you're thinking about adding Photo Raw or any of the other On One tools to your toolkit, hit the show notes. There is an offer code down there that will save you some money. It gives me a little support so I can keep doing videos like this. So let's have a look at the textures filter. Let's first get our textures filter added. And the very observant of you will notice that things look slightly different here. I only see the effects and locals tab. I happen to be running the effects standalone plugin to Lightroom in this video. I'm slowly working my way over to plugins here for, for my particular ecosystem. But everything in effects here works the same way in Photo Raw. So this is going to feel very familiar whatever on one editing angle you are coming in from. So what do we have in textures? Uh, as usual, we have the ability to mask, we have our overall opacity, we have a handful of styles, there are a bunch more, a bunch more in the, uh, in the, uh, the, the, the styles more pop up. You can highlight and audition all of these um, actually, that one right there, grunge vignette. Uh, that, that's that's a personal favorite. I like that one for a lot of different photos. You know, you can you get an idea of what you're going to do here. Um, I mentioned light leaks in the intro, where that's pretty interesting for some portraits. But let's get into the controls so you can understand how to work through textures for your particular photos. You have categories and texture. That's the first part here. Categories. These are all built into the product. All of these up top here, and then you'll notice a little My Textures area. If you have got texture packs or you've added textures on your own using the Extras Manager, those also show up in the Textures filter. So it's very convenient. You have all these custom textures, you add them in. Uh, there's a, a, a group of the Ancient Times ones that are really nice. Uh, some of these are from On One themselves, Paper and Canvas. I've got a few I've created over the years. And so you've got all sorts of different textures that are available to you. I'll stick with what's available in the product itself. I tend to like the paper ones quite a bit. So I'll choose paper as my category. Then within the paper category, you choose the texture itself. And there are all sorts of different kinds. This is kind of where I'll spend the time to just highlight and, and hover over the different types that are available and see which ones make sense for this photo here. And you know, this, this particular photo, uh, I'm thinking of like in, a, in a, a postcard kind of way, not so much as blatant as these postcard overlays, but a bit of a yellowed feel, something that's you know made its way around the globe, it's been handled, it's gotten a little bit rough along the way. Um, Recycled could be interesting as well. Let's start with postcard as we go through the different controls. But already, if I add that there, do a quick before and after, you can see you know, that it's been, this photo has been yellowed and blended as a result of adding that. Of course, we always have our opacity, so we can back that off here, as well as here. We have access to some of the blending modes these are all available in the gear menu, but the ones that most often work well with uh, different textures are here. I actually kind of like the way normal looks, but maybe not as strong. So kind of fading that down here, different between subtle and normal. I think I'm gonna go with normal here. The next set of controls we have is brightness, saturation, hue shift. Let me push uh, the opacity up all the way so these are easier to see what's going on. Let's start with brightness, okay? Brightness and darkness of the texture. That's an important thing, of the texture, right? You know, if I turn off the, the, the textures here, turn this back on, pay attention to the texture, right? The texture is what's getting brighter. It's not your photo. Saturation 
of the texture, right? We're saturating or desaturating. Then we have hue shift. This one, you know, we, we, can, we can change the tint of the postcard, in this case, choice that I've made. So postcard here is yellow. That's primarily what the texture is, but I can shift its hue and I can kind of start to make it blend and mix in a different way. So just because a texture has a predominant color doesn't mean you can't change it. And that can be quite useful as well as uh, the saturation. You take the saturation down to nothing and you know, let's, let's set the hue shift to, to where it was. I can work my textures into my black and white photos without worrying about adding color that I don't want. So saturation to zero is useful for texture blending in your uh, black and white photos. And hue shift is just really for your, your taste. Um, and I'm gonna bias that a little bit to the left there, give this more of a, uh, it's kind of somewhere between yellow and purple. And the reason I'm doing that is because postcard, if I turn this off for a second, postcard's already yellow. I've got a lot of yellow in the foreground of this scene here. Let me dial back our opacity too. So we start to we start to get that, that, that feel, right? Here we go, before and after. Different feel for sure, right? Uh, we have an invert option, so you can invert the entire texture. And it's really kind of, it's like it's, it's uh, brightness and darkness of, of, the, uh, of the, the, the texture overall. Uh, next section, colorize. If you want to add a very strong color tint, to your, uh, your image with the textures filtered, you can. This is kind of a convenience set of sliders where if you want to add this, this bit of, of colorization, you have the option. There are plenty of other filters in effects that let us do color grading and they have more fine grained controls. But if you're just looking for an extra little tint boost, you have colorize here if you want it. You do have that picker, so you can say, oh, I want, I don't know, more of that, that yellowish tone to come through because I'm really, really grooving on, on yellow for this particular scene. You have the option. I'll leave it turned off. And finally, we have transform. And this again controls the texture. We can scale the texture. Like watch this area up in here. We've got these couple of swooshes on the, on the texture itself. You'll see that texture grow and shrink. You can see it in the foreground as well. You have rotation, so you can rotate the canvas, and you have flip, horizontal, and vertical. This last option, fit to canvas, that takes your texture and makes sure it scales to the size of your photo. If you are uh, using a texture from, say, an older texture pack where, let's say for the sake of argument, the texture was 4,000 pixels on the long side, well, now you're shooting with a 40, 50, 60 megapixel camera, you bring that texture in, it's gonna be a little tiny thing uh, compared to the rest of your photo. So fit to canvas will just scale that out for you automatically and make sure your texture covers everything. And uh, that is really the fundamentals of texture. I think for this scene here, one additional item I might add in is a mask. I'll use a gradient at maybe half strength, drop that here and rotate it around just to downplay the texture a little bit in the foreground. I like what's happening in the sky, but as I was playing with that scale slider, watch that scale slider again, you know, that texture being added to the foreground, some of it felt a little distracting. And so just using a mask like we would on any of our tools in effects can downplay that in the foreground. And uh, one other thing I'll do, because we can add multiple textures. Let's add a second texture. I mentioned that grunge, uh, that vignette. Let me add that. Scale it up a little bit so it's, uh, it's not quite all the way there and maybe rotate it one turn. Oops, I went one too many. One more, one turn. Let's, let me shrink it down here so I can get the turn proper. There we go. I can scale it up this way and kind of add a vignette to the photo with some grunge. Downplay that some, don't want it to be too much. But you get the idea, I'm starting to add in like, all right, the corners of this you know, digital postcard have been handled, have been you know, passed around to people. It's getting a little bit, uh, a little bit dirty, a little bit worn down, more so than the rest of the scene. 
And uh, there we go. So I think uh, let's let's do a quick before and after here. If I were to take all of my effects down to zero, after, yeah, that's nice. I, I like that. And, and it's a very different feel for the image. That's how textures work. If you want to get deeper into this, yes, you can do textures with layers and you know all that sort of stuff. I've got an entire video course. It's an oldie but goodie. Texture blending with on one layers I mean, is less than 10 bucks. And in like about an hour, I give you everything you need to know about textures. There are really just a few fundamental things. And after that, it's your imagination and your creativity from there. Hope you enjoyed the video. Any other questions, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.